Hi guys, Cliff Olson, doctor of audiology and founder of Applied Hearing Solutions in Phoenix, Arizona. And in this video, I'm doing a detailed review of the Eargo 6 hearing aids. Coming up. So it's been a few years since I've reviewed an Eargo hearing aid, but the truth is, is that I didn't see enough improvement from generation to generation to justify a new review every single time they came out with a new product. However, due to the sheer quantity of requests from viewers on my channel to review the new Eargo 6 hearing aids, I decided to order a pair of these for myself to see if they really are any better than the previous versions of Eargo hearing aids. I will link these exact hearing aids in the description of this video in case you want to check them out for yourself because we are starting to see a significant amount of counterfeit hearing aids on the market right now. That being said, before I get started with the detailed review of the Eargo 6 hearing aids, if you could do me a huge favor and click the like button, it lets me know that you want to see more of these detailed review hearing aid videos. And while you're at it, if you have not yet hit the subscribe button with notification bell, go ahead and do that as well because that ensures that you never miss one of my newly released videos and I release several new videos every every single week. That being said, I really appreciate it. Now let's go ahead and get into the detailed review. Now Eargo has been around for a while now and they have always been a direct to consumer hearing aid company, meaning you do not have to go in and see a hearing care professional to get these devices. Now they are not technically over the counter hearing aids yet because over the counter hearing aids as of this recording do not exist yet, but I do expect them to become over the counter hearing aids when that day comes. Eargo does have hearing care professionals on staff, including several audiologists, for ongoing hearing aid support, whether you get that support via text message, phone call, email, or even virtual support through the Eargo app. Now you may have heard that Eargo was under investigation by the Department of Justice for possible insurance fraud related to the Federal Employee Health Benefits Program. However, based on information that Eargo has publicly released, the criminal investigation by the DOJ is no longer active. Based on my interpretation of this information, it would appear as though Eargo will continue to remain in business for the foreseeable future, meaning that they should be able to provide ongoing service to their customers and honor their hearing aid warranties. Now, if you are unfamiliar with Eargo, they are basically the first company to come out with rechargeable invisible in the canal hearing aids. Eargo hearing aids were initially developed in 2010 and they were intended to treat perceived mild to moderate levels of hearing loss. Eargo does have a hearing screener on their website, which can help you identify if an Eargo hearing aid could potentially work for you. Eargo was very clever in developing a way to suspend these devices down inside of your ear canals comfortably. They started off with flexi fibers, they worked their way to flexi palms, and now we're on to flexi pedals. There are several different sizes of these pedals, and then you have open pedals and closed pedals. And in my opinion, these pedals are much more comfortable than the original flexi fibers that Eargo came out with. The concept of having open and closed pedals has to do with acoustics. If you have open pedals, it allows for more free transfer of sound both in and out of your ear. And if you have closed pedals, that prevents the leakage of sound to try to hold off feedback. Another improvement that Eargo made is that they actually created these to have inductive charging instead of contact charging. The old contact charging had issues when debris would build up on the contacts and would prevent the devices from actually charging. So now with inductive charging, you just drop the devices down inside of the well here and it will charge the hearing aids no problem. Now there have been some reported issues from individuals that I've been in contact with of these pedals getting in the way of these devices actually charging. So if you use the larger pedals, you could run into issues with charging. They've also improved the battery life of these hearing aids as well. They now have 16 hours worth of battery life per charge, and then the case will store up to three additional days of charges. Now you probably want to see what these look like inside of my ear. So I'm gonna go ahead and take one of them, put it into my right ear, and that's what it looks like 
inside of my right ear. Hopefully you can see that okay. In fact, you probably can't see it because these are some of the most invisible hearing aids on the market. In fact, the only hearing aid that I think that is more invisible than these devices is the Lyric Extended Wear hearing aid that is placed approximately four millimeters away from your eardrum. To remove them, you just go in and you find the removal string that's on there. It is pretty hard to find. It's really small, so it can't be seen. But if you have finger dexterity issues, Issues, these might not be the best devices for you. Now let's talk about the performance of these devices. Now I was never really impressed with the amplification capabilities of the previous generations of Ergo hearing aids, but that was primarily because the adjustment capabilities of those devices was extremely limited, so it was very hard to match hearing loss prescriptive targets. However, now the Ergo 6 hearing aids have access to an app feature called Sound Match that allows you to do an in-situ hearing test directly through the app on your phone. In addition to using Sound Match to customize your settings, you can also use the app as a remote control to make further adjustments to your devices. You have to make sure that you set the volume of your phone between 75% and 100% because it uses a high frequency tone to communicate the adjustments to your hearing aids. In the volume screen, you can increase or decrease volume of one or both devices at the same time, and you can even mute your devices. In the noise filter section, you can adjust between a high level of noise reduction and a low level of noise reduction, or just turn noise reduction off. And in the program section, you can adjust which program you're using at any given moment, and you can actually adjust each of these different programs and customize them further. So if you wanna change between different programs to have access to them, you can do that here. Or you can even go in and do sound tuning, which allows you to adjust the volume levels of this particular program, or adjust between the treble and the bass settings. To test the customization capabilities of the Ergo 6 hearing aids, I had my assistant Bree, who has a mild to moderate hearing loss, take the test inside of the app, and then I was able to use real ear measurement to verify how well these hearing aids were able to match her hearing loss prescription. Now, if you have no idea what real ear measurement is, then I would highly recommend that you check out my video that I will link down in the description, because it is possibly the most important thing when it comes to programming hearing aids. This is Bree's hearing test that was measured in clinic on the left and the result of her sound match in the Ergo app on the right. Since we do not know the exact thresholds measured inside of the app, it is hard to know how accurate the app is, but generally speaking, it was accurate in identifying at least that she had a mild level of hearing loss. To perform real ear measurement, we placed probe microphone tubes inside of her ear canals to measure the amount of amplification she is receiving from the Ergo 6 hearing aids and to see if they are capable of matching the prescription for her hearing loss. To start, we measured her natural ear canal resonance, which is indicated by the solid pink line. This is the natural amplification effect provided by just her pinna and her ear canal without hearing aids inside of her ears. The NAL-NL2 average level speech prescription for her hearing loss is indicated by the pink hash mark line. Ideally, we would want the solid line to match with the hash mark line as closely as possible, indicating that she is receiving enough amplification to overcome her hearing loss. As you can see, her ear canal resonance is significantly below her prescriptive needs. Next, we are going to measure the initial amplification levels of the Ergo 6 devices inside of her ear canals. We call this first fit. This will be represented by the solid turquoise line. Each of these curves will be different colors. However, the prescriptive hash mark lines will remain in the same position throughout these tests. Initially, I was very impressed with how close the first fit settings were to her prescriptive targets. The Ergo 6 hearing aids were a bit over amplified in these ranges here, and they were a bit under amplified above 4000 Hz, but in general, they were pretty close. Next, after making adjustments inside of the Ergo app, I was able to do a better job of controlling the amplification as indicated by the solid purple line. It wasn't perfect, but it was very respectable and way better than the Ergo Neos that I reviewed several years ago. 
Doing a quick comparison with the Bose sound control hearing aids in green, you can see that in the higher frequencies, the Bose hearing aids did a little bit better, and in the lower frequencies, the Ergo hearing aids did a little bit better. Next, I wanted to test out a few of the different preset programs, such as the restaurant program and the music program. The restaurant program in red increased the high frequency response of the Ergo 6 hearing aids, which makes sense since the high frequencies are what we use to separate speech from background noise. And the music program, as indicated by the new green curve, increases amplification levels throughout all frequency ranges, somewhat similar to just increasing overall volume levels. I was also able to measure the amount of noise reduction at the default setting in the normal program, which resulted in approximately a 10 to 11 decibels of steady state noise reduction, and at the high setting, which resulted in 14 decibels of noise reduction. While this might not necessarily make speech clearer in a noisy situation, it will definitely make the noise more comfortable to deal with. Overall, the amplification customization capabilities of the Ergo 6 hearing aids far exceeds any of their previous generations of devices that I've tested. Now I should say that these real ear measurement results are unique to Brie and the only way to know how close the Ergo 6 hearing aids would come to matching your hearing loss prescription is to have real ear measurement performed on you by a hearing care professional while actually wearing the Ergo devices. Now I gotta say, I was impressed with how close the Ergo 6 hearing aids were able to come to Bree's mild to moderate hearing loss prescription. And on top of that, Bree actually made a comment saying that the Ergo 6 hearing aids sounded better than the Bose sound control hearing aids. However, at her full prescription, she experienced a consistent whistling or feedback inside of her left ear, which is a consistent issue that we see with Ergo devices since the microphones are so close to the receivers inside the ear canal. To to fix this, our only real option was to just lower down the amount of amplification overall or reduce the amount of high frequency amplification that she was receiving. And on top of that, I wasn't able to see much of a difference between open pedals and closed pedals when it came to reducing the potential for feedback. Now, according to Irigo, these hearing aids should be capable of switching into different program settings for different environments that you go into, but I found that not really to be the case. I mean, it would switch between different programs, but it wasn't when you're changing into different environments. I think it had more to do with rogue high frequency signals in my environment that would mute my hearing aids on occasion and it would change programs on occasion. Basically, I think these high frequency signals in the environment mimic the signals that were coming out of the phone if you were trying to make changes changes in your Ergo 6 devices. These hearing aids also have the ability to use tap controls, but I wasn't able to make that work very efficiently. In fact, the only times I was able to trigger program changes using tap control was mainly when I was just trying to wiggle the device around because it was making my ears itch. I have had several Ergo hearing aid users report the same issues to me as well, and even though they have had issues with this when it came to program changing, it is very nice to actually have voice prompts inside of these devices so you know exactly what program you're going into. The Ergo 6 is IPX7 rated, which means you can technically take it and submerge it in one meter of water for up to 30 minutes, and the device should still work afterwards. Now, I have not yet tested this myself to see if it's actually true, but I have had a number of Ergo 6 hearing aid users report durability issues to me if they happen to be individuals who use them when they're sweating a lot. That being said, these hearing aids do appear to be more durable than the previous generations of Ergo devices, and this is improved upon with the ability to replace microphone covers as well, just in case earwax or debris is trying to get into the microphones. And even if you do run into durability issues, another really nice thing about the Ergo 6 hearing aids is that they come with a two-year warranty instead of a one-year warranty, which was normal with other Ergo devices. It would be nice if these hearing aids were Bluetooth compatible to stream audio directly into your hearing aids, but given that these hearing aids are so small, that is a pretty typical trade-off that you're going to have to make anyway. As far as cost goes, the Ergo 6 hearing aids are just shy of around $3,000 for the pair, and this is a little pricey considering you do not get any in-office care, and they are definitely the most expensive direct-to-consumer hearing aids by a pretty wide margin.
But like I said, these are the only rechargeable invisible ink canal hearing aids that exist on the market, and as you can see, they have made some significant improvements over their previous generations. Overall, I've got to say I'm glad that I decided to review the Ergo 6 hearing aids because they are quite clearly the best Ergo hearing aids that I've ever tested. So if you have a perceived mild to moderate hearing loss and you're looking for a direct-to-consumer hearing aid option, the Ergo 6 might be the perfect hearing aid for you. And after all, if you do not have success using the Ergo 6 hearing aids, you can always return them easily for a refund and seek out professional care. That's it for this video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. If you like the video, please share it. If you want to see other videos just like this one, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Also, feel free to check out my website, drcliffaud.com. Oh, <laughs>